Most new cultivars are the result of breeding programs. The pros say to themselves, wow, I really, really love the taste of this Gary. But the Gary is known to be a shy producer. It'll take a year off sometimes. On the other hand, we have a variety like this big tree here in my neighbor's yard called Palmer. Palmer is an insanely good producer. You might take the pollen from a Palmer and breed it with the female flower of a Gary. Or you could take the pollen of a Gary and breed it with a Palmer. In an attempt to get a tree with the productivity of a Palmer and the flavor of a Gary. The breeder hopes that some, or many, of those female flowers will become fertilized and actually produce mangoes. And eventually, you'll get your mangoes. Now, the fruit remains unchanged. This tree will produce Gary mangoes, and these Gary mangoes will taste like Gary mangoes no matter who the pollinator was, or the pollinizer, I guess is the terminology. If this guy was pollinated with pollen from a Hayden, and this guy was pollinated with pollen from a Glen, they're gonna taste exactly the same, but the seed inside is gonna be different. In fact, even if both of these mangoes got their pollen from the same variety, even the same tree, even the same flower, the seeds inside are gonna be genetically different. They are hoping that out of the dozens or even hundreds of seeds they planted that were a crossbreed of two varieties that they're trying to breed together, they are hoping that at least one of them will taste good. And if it does, that tree is selected. And this happens to be one such tree. Yes, it needs a little watering, which I'm gonna to get to after I film this video. And this is currently known as the O15 mango. And while I don't know this for sure, I'm inclined to believe that O15 represents something similar to the seed that produced this tree was in a pot that sat in like column O, row 15 at their nursery. But just because the fruit tastes good, it doesn't mean the O15 is going to be a future variety. So the next thing they do is roll out the tree to the mango community, to the commercial growers, to the backyard growers. And then we grow the tree and observe its behavior. Does it grow fast? Does it grow slow? Is it disease resistant? Does it produce a good crop? Does it produce every year? And the more you answer yes to those questions, the more likely this tree is gonna roll out into the market and get a name. Like this one here, the famous coconut cream. The mangoes produced on this tree are delicious.